This is Tim Talks About Everything, and today I want to talk about creek walking. Now, I do enjoy rock hounding, but around central Indiana, you don't get a chance to go to wonderful places like Lake Michigan and Lake Superior and the other Great Lakes, but we do live in the Great Lakes area in that those massive lakes used to extend all the way into Indiana. And so what you find in Lake Michigan, you also find in Indiana in the creeks and in the fields and glacial till and all that kind of thing. So when I walk in a creek, then I'm finding a lot of the same things that I would find up north. So unfortunately though, if you have a lot of rain and you have a lot of snow and the creeks get filled, then wow, there are times when you go to the creek and there's no way that you're gonna get in that water because it is rushing and it is deep and you're gonna drown if you try to get in it. Well, there are those days when you come to the creek and you think, it hasn't rained in a couple of days, the creek will be down by now, and then you get out here, and no, the creek is still up. Well, here I am out at Eagle Creek, near Indianapolis, pretty close to Zionsville, Indiana, and this is a part of the Great, Great Lakes region. So a lot of the things that you would find in Lake Michigan, you're also going to find here at Eagle Creek and all throughout, pretty much all throughout Indiana. And when you don't live near Lake Michigan or Superior or any of the Great Lakes, especially during the winter, like today, which is the very end of February, you just have to make do with what you've got. You know, love the one you're with. That's what the song says. And so I'm going to love the one I'm with. And what I'm with right now is Eagle Creek. And I'm going to walk around and see what I can find. And right off the bat, I notice this funny looking rock right here. And it does have some interest. For one thing, it is a hagstone. It's got a hole that goes all the way through it. Now me personally, I'm not so into hagstones, but I know other people are. So hey, I'll pick it up, and maybe give it to somebody else. Moving along here. Now we've had high water here for quite a while. So I finally waited until things got down a little before I came out here and whatever is here right now is probably pretty new because uh, the waters were way above this bank and they brought in just a whole new crop of rocks to look at and so right off the bat I see this piece of banded material here it's just sandstone but it's kind of cool. Not cool enough though. Here's a modern shell. Okay, come back to me when you're older. What I'm doing right now is basically I'm just looking for patterns. not such a bad piece of granite right there kind of kind of attractive I don't need any more granite but it is kind of attractive I am a minimalist when it comes to picking up rocks I don't like to take very much stuff leave it for somebody else or just leave it just leave it there's another golf ball that one's no good though Oh, I should have kept that and thrown it away. What am I thinking? It's another piece of granite. Not a bad piece of granite, but I'm fighting the pretty rock syndrome pretty hard today. So I don't really want to take home a lot of stuff. All right. That does look a little bit fossilized. Wash it off a little bit. Oh, 
Oh yeah. That, my friends, looks to be a little piece of horn coral. Very deteriorated, but horn coral nonetheless. There's a nice piece of banded slate. Not too bad, I can take it home, put it in with the other banded stuff I have out in the yard. Makes for a nice little display. Chert, I would say. Granite, I would say. That's pretty nice. Might have to take that. I love this red stuff. It looks to be a little bit of jasper and maybe something else included. In. This here, I love finding this because it is some nice flint or chert just the way it's broken that could have happened easily that could have easily happened just bouncing along down the creek but it's the kind of material that Native Americans would have made scrapers and projectile points so it's kind of a nice thing to find that. Okay. I'd say that also is some chert, but it's probably just stained. That blue color is, I would imagine, staining. So can't get too excited about that, but I'll take it home. You find a lot of stained chert up in Lake Michigan and you know when you're first starting out you get all excited because you think you've found some Leland blue but you haven't you've just found some chert that's stained blue and it looks nice I mean it is pretty and so you take it home if you've got pretty rock syndrome but in reality there's a ton of it you should probably just leave it leave it right leave it right there is a big piece of glass that needs to go in the trash well that's a little death plate it's got a lot of tiny little fossils in it put it under the magnifying glass I'm sure you'd find things there that are just fascinating all kinds of crinoids that I can see maybe I'll take it home take a picture of it and then get rid of it but I don't need more death plates I've got lots of death plates I like finding this this kind of stuff where it's just coming apart. It is so cool. You never know what might be inside one of those layers. If you pull pull it apart a little bit, you might find something really cool. Nice piece of sandstone. Very pretty. Some more banded material. Kind of nice. Kind of small. So small, it's not any trouble to take it home. In my rock garden at home, I have sections of things. So I'll have all the banded material in one small section, and all the septarian stones in another section. And you can see it easier that way. 
you see, okay, there's there's some nodules there, and there's some uh, granite there, and whatever it may be. It's kind of a nice way to display it. Try not to get too crazy about taking stuff home, though, because it does tend to pile up. And you know, there's such a thing as having too much. Yes, there is. I mean, it is possible to have too much. Because if you have too much, it just starts looking ugly. You may like it. And maybe that's the only person you should care about. But when you're showing your rock collection off to other people, all they're thinking about is, how long is this gonna take? When will he be done? Another hagstone. That one's not very interesting. We'll leave it here. Another piece of glass. Throw that in. It's kind of funny. When I watch other people's videos, I see things in their viewfinder or on, on screen that I think, wow, why didn't you pick that up? And maybe you're seeing things that you think, wow, why didn't you pick that up? But here's something that I think looks kind of interesting. Let's see if you can see that. All right, I like the pattern of it. It looks sort of different. And look what we have here. Oh yeah. Look at that. Well, it almost looks like honeycomb coral. I'm pretty sure that's what it is, honeycomb coral. But it is I hesitate to use the word agatized. I don't think it's agatized, but solidified, maybe, is the term. Anyway, it's nice and sparkly and looks pretty cool. Okay, that's that's not a showstopper, but that's that's decent. It's something decent. It's not nothing, it's something. Sometimes you see something like this and you think, well, that's just concrete. That's exactly what that is. <laughs> uh, looks like a piece of quartz. Okay, what's that? You tell me in the comments section what that is. That is a fossil. It kind of looks like to me, at least, it kind of looks like a uh, chain coral that's very badly eroded. But you tell me what that is. Some of these creeks, sometimes you look at it and you think, oh, there's just a lot of mud there. But you walk down that creek. And it's amazing what you might find. If you like this kind of thing. If you don't, to each their own, right? More bigger stuff. That's a nice piece of granite right there. That's the kind of thing that somebody comes to your house and they say, oh, that's really cool. And they say, well, do you want it? Oh, I could never take that. Yeah, you can, you can have it. There's more where that came from. If you give a lot of stuff away, who knows, you might end up having a friend to go rock hunting with. Oh, that's pretty. And uh, they may end up teaching you a few things. It's kind of the way it goes. You pass it on to somebody else, and they pass it back to you. So I got down here. <laughs> the question will be, can I get back up that bank? I think I can. And once I got down here, because this is a good spot, and I found some interesting things here in the past, some good fossils and so forth, game ball. 
smart facts. Uh, this here looks to be a little bit, well, maybe it's just average, but maybe a little bit above average death plate. A lot of variety of fossils in there. Now I like that. That, in fact, could be something more than just a rock. Uh, that might actually be a sponge, an ancient sponge. I'd like to investigate that further. This is my last hope for a showstopper. I haven't seen anything quite in that category yet. I love to see the way the water just pushes all this vegetation down. So fascinating. Water is just so powerful. Don't want to get in a fight with water. Oh, that looks like a marriage between granite and basalt, maybe. It's a nice design. It's a brachiopod impressions on the back. That actually could look pretty good in a in a garden. That could actually look bad in a garden. Now, can you resist something that looks like this? Because I can't. That's old. That's pretty cool, actually. Lots of crinoid action going, uh, going along there, and uh, some of the other stuff. I don't know what it is. <sighs> well, you could. Paint a face on that, couldn't you? You could paint a face on that. And it could look like something. Well, it is interesting. It kind of looks like a skull. I'm going to take it home just to kind of look into those crevices and see if there's anything like botryzal crystal.